Hello everyone, I'm Throf, a PhD student at Georgia Tech, and today I'll talk about investigating an organic view fraud operation on YouTube. We know that social media platforms are driven by... Oh, sorry. ...by user engagement metrics, and manipulation of these metrics potentially expose the platforms to abuse. Video view fraud is a unique class of fake engagement abuse on video sharing platforms such as YouTube, where the view count of videos is artificially inflated. But fake views on YouTube is not a new phenomenon. For example, a New York Times article published in 2018 claims that video plays can be bought for pennies and delivered in bulk. The fraudsters claim to be capable of delivering an unlimited amount of views to a video circumventing YouTube's abuse detection systems. Meanwhile, YouTube recognized it as an extraordinary problem that spent years working on. While fake engagement on video content portals such as YouTube has been studied previously, there exists limited empirical characterization of real-world video view fraud campaigns. Also, the prior work that does exist focuses on bot-driven automated view fraud. In this study, we expand our understanding of video view fraud by investigating organic or human-driven approaches. Organic view fraud relies on human, real human users rather than bots to generate views, presumably because manually generated fake views may be more challenging to detect and block. Such activity is still classified as view fraud as users do not intentionally request to watch these videos. We conduct a case study of a large scale, long running organic view fraud operation on YouTube via one, one of the world's most popular illegal streaming websites, one to three movies. An investigation by the U.S. Motion Picture Association in 2018 found that the site has almost 100 million visitors a month. On one to three movies, before users can watch a stream, a use YouTube video is displayed as a pre-roll advertisement and automatically played, thus generating a fake view for that video. Let's now look at the research questions that will guide our exploration. What kind of videos receive fake views? How extensively do videos and channels participate in this view fraud? And how effective is this view fraud? But before we dive into our research questions, here's an overview of our method in data collection. We reverse engineered how YouTube videos are delivered as pre-roll ads on one to three movies. Using man-in-the-middle proxy, we monitored the plain text web traffic when accessing the streams on the site. And we identified that when a stream is requested, the site interacts with multiple ad networks to request different types of ads, including pop-ups and banners. We trace the request that fest YouTube videos to an API endpoint owned by AdSpyGlass and ad network. When a video is requested from the AdSpyGlass endpoint, it re responds with the URL of another service endpoint, which actually provides a final YouTube video link. We observe that across all responses, only a small set of secondary service endpoints are used which we refer to as subservices. We monitored one to three movies through July to September 2020 for active subservices and found these three in total, GreetSeed, ExtremeServe, and SOC panels. To collect the YouTube videos involved in this view fraud operation, we programmatically milked all three subservices for YouTube videos using a Python script, which queried each subservice for a video every three seconds. And we recorded the IDs of the YouTube videos returned. Since we only hit the API endpoint and record the responses, our measurement don't really affect the video view counts themselves. Over a ninth month period from July 2020 to March 2021, we collected about 45,000 unique videos from GreetSeed, about 150,000 from ExtremeServe, and about 86,000 from SOC panels. Looking at the temporal distribution of newly collected videos from three subservices, we observed that while ExtremeServe remained online throughout our data collection, providing new videos at a consistent rate, Read Seed and SOC panels ceased their operations by October 2020. To better investigate the gathered videos involved in the view fraud operation, we used YouTube's data API to periodically collect metadata snapshots for these videos and the channels, starting from when we first observed a video distributed by a subservice up until March 2021 or until they were taken down. The metadata we acquired includes the video and the channel titles, author, language, topics, and channel statistics, such as the number of views and subscribers. 
YouTube Daily Quota allowed us to access daily snapshots for the first 150,000 videos gathered, which were associated with about 75,000 channels. And every five days, we also connected metadata snapshots for other videos hosted by these channels, which we did not record as involved in the view fraud effort. These were about 800,000 videos. As academic researchers outside YouTube, we lack full visibility into the ecosystem, which leads us to several important limitations. Our data collection is centered on 123movies2020.org, a mirror of 123movies. There may exist other mirrors of 123movies or similar streaming sites that function differently and for which our findings may not hold. We ultimately are able to un unable to distinguish uh, fake views from real organic ones, and it is possible that YouTube videos we monitor are also involved in other view fraud operation. This lack of visibility prevents us from establishing causal relationships between the view fraud we observe and the video outcomes we observe, although we explore correlations to the extent possible. There are inherent delays between when a video is first advertised as part of the view fraud campaign when we first milk it, and we first record it as, uh, from, as the first metadata snapshot. These delays limit our observation of the initial video dynamics, some of which I'll discuss soon. So back to our research questions. First, let's characterize the videos which receive such view fraud. We look at the general themes of the videos receiving fake views using the top topic tags from the video metadata annotations from YouTube. The distributions of topics among videos shows that the largest portion of videos cover music and entertainment topics. That's about 35% of all videos. This observation corroborates with prior reports of the media industry's participation in the view fraud, such as the New York Times article. In fact, if you look at the most popular videos involved, they, they include mostly music and entertainment videos. In fact, Despacito, which is one of the most viewed videos on YouTube from 2018 to 2020, is also involved in this operation. Also, uh, an internet meme uh, known as Rick Rolling, which involves the video Never Gonna Give You Up, is also involved in this operation. And these videos are already popular with hundreds of millions of views, and we are unclear about how their motivations, uh, what their motivations are for participating in this view fraud. To further characterize the videos receiving fraudulent views, we studied the age of these videos and channels involved. As we discussed in the method, we collected YouTube videos from three distinct subservices, Extreme Serve, Great Seed, and Sock Panels. So we see that 80 about 80% of the videos collected from Extreme Serve and Great Seed, and about 45% of those collected from Sock Panels were published within 50 days of the first observed advertisement. Meanwhile, the median year for first video publication for YouTube channels participating in the view fraud was 2018, with only about 20% of the channels publishing for the first time after 2020. These findings indicate that while the videos involved in the view fraud tend to be relatively new, the participating channels are often long established with some over a decade old. Now that we have an idea of what these videos look like, let's see how extensively these videos and channels participate in the view fraud. Looking at how long a video is advertised on different subservices, we found that for SOC panels, about 80% of the videos were advertised for over a month whereas half of Extreme Serve and Great Seed videos were advertised for only a day. We note that for videos already being advertised when we first start milking a subservice, our observed duration lower bounds the true, true duration. We hypothesize that the differences across subservices may have arisen due to different service offerings. For example, SOC panels could have a longer, uh, could have a monthly view fraud service, whereas the other subservices could have a daily offering. However, we lack further visibility into the different subservices operation to validate our hypothesis. We also note that more than 70% of the channels advertised only one video, and more than 90% of the channels advertised new videos over a period of only up to 10 days. So clearly there are not many repeat customers for, these, uh, for this view fraud. This observation naturally raises a question about the efficacy of this ecosystem, which is our final research question. Here, we depict how the view, video view counts change over time by plotting the distributions of the view count changes at each two-day intervals across the first 20 days after the initial video advertisement, as well as the all-time distribution, which compares the first and the last snapshot per video across our entire measurement period. 
For each time interval, we display separate box plots for each of the three subservices, as well as one for all other videos of the channels participating in the view fraud, where these videos were not observed as advertised. We see that in the first few days after the initial metadata snapshot, the majority of the videos gain views, sometimes in the thousands. However, within a week, the median view video has negative net growth in view count across all three subservices. We also find that the median view count change for other channel videos that were not observed as advertised is small but positive. However, a quarter of these other channel videos had net negative view count changes, suggesting that they too might have been involved in other view fraud, fraud efforts. These results suggest that while this view fraud campaign might be effective in the short term, YouTube is able to largely mitigate its visible impact in the long term. Another way to look at it is to study the distribution of view count changes conditioned to the video's initial view counts. Here we plot heat maps that visualize the distribution of view count changes across our entire measurement period for videos up to about 10,000 initial view counts, which, is, which, which covers about 80% of the videos for all three subservices. We observe that for all three subservices, the majority of the videos experiencing net negative majority of the videos experience net negative view growth with the highest densities of videos near the y equals zero line, which indicate limited net change in view count, as well as y equals minus x line, which indicates that all initial view, views observed were removed. These were presumably views that the media, video might have received between being advertised and us recording its view count. We note that a small portion of the videos do experience uh, sizable view count growth, which could be false negatives in YouTube's detection or cases where these videos actually attract real organic viewers. This trend roughly holds for all three subservices. And this result reinforces our conclusion that YouTube is able to mitigate the fraud in the long term. Beyond the results presented today, our paper also does further analysis of the view behavior, so please take a look at it for details. Moving forward, a study based on people surrounding to further work in this area. For example, we could look at how participants are drawn into the scheme and what are the economics at play here. For example, a potential study would look into the advertiser ecosystem and follow the money. Now, when I revisited one of the movies recently, I found that the added a click to promote button to the site with content creators who potentially submit the video for the first If you create an account on this site, your right to this page will be the offer daily kind of engagement procedure. This screenshot shows that you can buy 100,000 instant YouTube views from 100% real human users for five years. There are also many other kinds of engagement on platforms such as Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook available on the site. YouTube views from 100% real and what is the economics at play here? For example, a potential study could look into the advertiser ecosystem and follow the money. Now, when I re revisited one to three movies recently, I found that they added a click to promote button to the site where content creators could potentially submit uh, their videos for advertisement. If you create an account on this on the site, you're led to this page where, you, where they offer various kinds of fake engagement for sale. This screenshot shows that we can buy 1,000 instant YouTube views from 100% real human users for $5. There are also many other kinds of fake engagements on platforms such as Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook available on the site. So to close up, we monitored the campaign's operation over time to characterize the participants in this ecosystem, their behaviors, and the outcomes of the view fraud. What we found was an expansive ecosystem with hundreds of thousands of views from tens of thousands of channels. Our investigation into the success of view fraud efforts suggests that benef the benefits are primarily short driven, uh, sh uh, short term, but YouTube is able to quickly detect and remove many of the fake views. Yet the, few, yet the uh, fraud campaign remains persistent. We also observed that this operation has only a few repeat customers who typically participate only for a brief period of time, perhaps recognizing the poor return on investing in the view fraud. 
This brings into question how this operation continues to thrive over years. It seemingly exhibits stake oil properties with the promised outcomes, which is the growth in views, is not truly delivered. And like with many snake oil scams, we hypothesize that this ecosystem survives by luring in new unsuspecting participants. But looking ahead, future work can build upon our study and look into the economics at play. We have shared our results with YouTube and we hope that our study in helps inform how platforms like YouTube detect with, uh, deal with such abuse. Please find our paper at the link below and feel free to reach out to me for any questions. Thank you.